Hey everybody, it's Nate here again, and today is day number 222 of quitting alcohol. Today I was thinking a lot about what always caused me to go back to drinking in my many, many attempts at quitting in the past. And tell me if this sounds familiar, you know you've gone a few days and you really want to quit drinking, and then one day comes along and the cravings are just so great, and you just feel this discomfort, and you finally just say, screw it, it's not worth it, and you go pick up the alcohol again and then start drinking and it's back to trying to quit again all over once things get bad enough. And so you, you give it another go, you go a few days, a week, month, however long it is, and then boom, a bad day comes along where you really wanna drink, you end up drinking, and the cycle starts over again and again and again and again. And I thought about what is it that causes that craving that's so great that you just decide to finally say screw it and go back to drinking. Part of it is maybe you have gone a little bit of time and you start to forget how bad your life was and what made you quit drinking in the first place. You know, maybe you've gone two months, three months, and um, the memory's not fresh anymore about the misery you were in when you were drinking. Uh, maybe you think that all of a sudden now you can somehow moderate your drinking, even though you've proven to yourself time and time and time again that you cannot. Uh, so that that tri tricky mind little thing comes in and makes you think that you can drink again. Sometimes um, the craving is just something you can't shake. You fester on that thought and you continue to focus in on it and turn the dial up on it by not getting up and doing something more productive instead of sitting there pining after alcohol or you decide not to or choose not to think about something different and get your mind off of that thought of drinking. And so uh, that builds and builds and builds until finally you just can't take it anymore, right? And you decide to go down to the store, down to the bar and, and drink again. Um, and uh, you got two choices in life, uh, the way that I see it, uh, because I've been on both sides of these choices now. You have the choice of that, that, that temporary moment of weakness where things get bad and you want to drink and deciding it is a choice to pick up the drink again or to uh, feel the discomfort and pain or whatever it is you want to call that feeling and wake up the next day um, happy that you didn't drink and got through that moment, that brief moment in time that doesn't last forever. Um, which is going, if you do that, it's going to lead towards long-term happiness versus that brief temporary band-aid fix of instant gratification that you feel that you want in that moment of weakness, you know? And that's what gets us every single time when we're trying to quit alcohol, that moment of weakness, that one bad decision to pick up the drink again, and then uh, we drink for a period of time, things get bad again, and we start the process again and again and again. And you're never gonna reach that long-term happiness and success of quitting alcohol that you're looking for if you keep giving in to those cravings, those moments of weakness, making the decision to pick up the drink rather than feeling that discomfort. And it's like I've said in so many videos, it's that moment where it's the worst that you really want to drink that when you say no and you feel what you're meant to feel, that uncomfortableness, that lack of instant gratification, that's when you level up and that's when the next time that happens, it's half as much as easy as that because it's um, something you've already been through and done and you've proven to yourself that you can get through it. So it's that much easier the next time those major cravings or triggers pop up. But uh, you're never going to get there if you're, um, you know, weak minded in the sense that you decide to always go for that alcohol rather than feeling that discomfort. Um, there's really no other way to say it. I thought about this a lot today. There's no other way to get through um, the beginning stages of quitting alcohol if you keep turning to the drink in those moments of weakness, those times when it's tough, and you shoot back to that instant gratification way of living and mindset of wanting to just um, get past that temporary discomfort and go for the drink again. Um, you've got to be bigger than that. You've got to be stronger than that. Um, if you 
can't or you're, you're, you're just not willing to or you don't make the decision to, you're going to stay stuck in that same rut that I was in for over a decade. And uh, even on this journey I'm on right now, there were so many times in the first couple of months when uh, the cravings were the strongest that I felt myself want to just say screw it and go to that instant gratification fix. But um, the, I remember, uh, like I say, I did a video, I don't know, it was in my first couple of weeks, I think it was, where I had a really bad craving. And that was one of the times. And that's usually, you know, within the first couple of weeks, we're going to get some of those really strong ones. And uh, I remember the choice of uh, wanting to drink or not. I really didn't want to drink, but I really wanted to. And I remember thinking, if I... I never really had a craving this bad that I decided not to drink on. And if I do, what's going to happen? Am I going to die? No. Uh, if I've never allowed myself to um, get through that craving that's that strong before, what would happen if I actually did? And that so began the longest I've ever been without alcohol by, by rejecting that one hard craving um, because when they got to that level that that one was, that one craving, that's when I would always give in. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are the exact same way. There's that you go, you can do a little bit the first day, the second day, and you're fighting them off, this and that, these cravings. And then the big one hits, right? Uh, it's like a 9.9 .9 on the Richter scale. And um, maybe you're pissed off at the world and you just want to drink because you're angry or uh, you had a stressful day at work or you got into a, a spat with your significant other or um, you got money troubles that popped up. or I mean, there's so many different things that could be a little uh, trigger to make you want to just get away from whatever it is that um, you don't want to deal with, right? And um, so that 9.9 .9 on the Richter scale craving hits and um, you've never allowed yourself to go without alcohol during that 9.9, .9, right? So what would happen if you did? Um, give that one a shot. Uh, you know, you're, like I say, you're not going to die. Yeah, it's going to suck a little bit. Yeah, you're going to feel like, what the hell am I doing here? And I don't know how to do this. And uh, you're going to, uh, you know, uh, tweak out a little bit. You know, I mean, I did. Um, but here I am, and uh, now these 9.9 .9 on the Richter scales hit. They're not even 9.9 .9 anymore. They don't exist anymore at that level because of, uh, you know, it's, a, it's almost like you get through the big one and the rest of them uh, are just aftershocks, right? I mean, there might be a few bigger ones in the beginning, but they get less and less and less. And now, you know, I get these uh, 2.1 on the Richter scale cravings instead of these... Uh, you know, earth shattering uh, kaboom ones that just uh, make you want to uh, say, screw it, you know. So if you've never allowed yourself to have the big one hit and um, deprive yourself of that instant gratification, um, do it. Try it. Give it a go. I just you, even if you have to go to bed early, I, I've talked to a lot of people that um, you know they don't just don't know what to do uh, for some of these big cravings, or they can't shake them. So you know what? They just throw in the towel and go to bed. Wake up the next day happy that they didn't drink. That's an option. Uh, you know. Get some kind of physical outlet by exercise. Get on the treadmill. Go for a hike. Go for a walk. Lift some weights. Go for a sprint. You know, whatever you got to do to just kind of get out whatever stress or aggression is making you have that craving, you know. But I can promise you guys, if you get through enough of these 9.9 .9 on the Richter scale cravings, for lack of a better term, then all of a sudden the magic happens and it gets so much easier. But if you're like me, in my earlier stages uh, in life when I was getting these cravings and trying to quit drinking, uh, the 9.9 .9 would hit and I would say, screw it and go back every time. And uh, I lived years in misery, years and years and years, why my health declined, why I got fatter, why just everything in my life was just starting to go to shit because um, I decided on those big cravings to not say no. Um, so... Um, just something I was thinking about today, how um, that's usually the uh, kiss of death uh, for a lot of us in this quitting drinking process that make us have to start over is those just 9.9 .9 cravings that, um, you know, we just decide, eh, I don't want to deal with this, so I'm just going to go and drink again.
And uh, then you hate it later, you regret it, you regret your decision of drinking, you wake up the next day hungover, uh, maybe because you haven't drank in a while and your tolerance has um, gone back down and then you feel like crap, you're ashamed of what you did. And uh, so again starts the cycle, right? So, um, you know, just to give that one some thought and try next time that that big one hits to um, say no to it. And at the end of the day, you know, what kind of person are you? What kind of person am I? What kind of, um, you know, uh, person do we want to be? That person that can't say no to something, that weak-minded um person that just gives in to temptation, that's not strong, that's, um, you know, I, I look at myself as pathetic back then, just uh, uh, unable to, uh, you know, pull up my bootstraps and make the tough decision um, when those cravings would hit to say no to them. And I look back and I go, I was really uh, weak-minded at those times. And um, the only way that you get stronger is by feeling the pain, right? No pain, no gain. You're going to have to feel the discomfort of depriving yourself that alcohol. But you're never going to get on the other side of this journey of being free from it. Uh, being free from that ball and chain you're tied down to where you feel compelled to drink every day if you don't put up and deal with some of those big cravings. And um, so that's just the reality of this whole journey in this situation is until you can learn to do what I'm talking about with those big ones, um, and it's going to just keep happening again and again and again. So um, give that one some thought today, guys. Um, if you guys are enjoying these videos, please give them a like. Subscribe to the channel if you can. And most importantly, remember, sauce ain't the boss. You are. You guys have a great day.